Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Kathy. Uh, good morning, Kelly. Thank you for popping by, girl. I hope you have I hope you have an awesome day with your mom. I hope you have lots of giggles, girl. Lots of giggles. And uh maybe see a few things that you guys can like talk about, right? It's always amazing what you see out and about people watching. So I hope you guys have fun. I hope all your errands get done and uh you guys have those little moments on your drive and everything. Those are great. Uh, good morning, Joe. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry I missed you guys yesterday. Uh, we had to leave early to go do the whole um, golf cart and all that stuff. We had to drive, had a long drive. So a lot of times we try to leave a little earlier to miss the traffic, and sometimes that works, and sometimes it doesn't. Yesterday was a doesn't. We were a long time in traffic yesterday. It made for a very, very long day. Good morning, Sally. Good morning, good morning. So sorry about having to counsel yesterday. Um, hopefully I won't have to do that for a while. But anyhow, uh, welcome in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pray, get started. Uh, try to keep my own chatter down today. Um, and just stick to the word. How's that? I know I need it. I didn't get it yesterday. And I act up when I don't get the word. So let's get the word, right? Uh, Lord, we just come to you today and we thank you first and foremost for the day that you gave. We thank you for the, the breath that you give us each day, the uh, being able to put our feet on the ground and um, just tend to the things that you would have for us to do today. So, Lord, I just ask that you just go before our plans, that you would help us to um, be good with our time um, and not get fussy when things don't go just the way that we need them to go. And Lord, just help us to be flexible. Uh, Lord, I ask that you would just uh, go before our understanding today, that you would help us to comprehend your word, help us to absorb it. We thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for what it does for us. Um, and thank you for also those moments where you allow us to see what happens when we don't get um, a drink of your word each day. So Lord, we thank you for uh, bringing everybody here. We thank you for uh, opening up hearts and minds to you. And Lord, we thank you for drawing people to you. Lord, um, we also ask that you would just give us courage to speak to others in those moments that you've called us to, those little special little arrangements that you arranged for us, uh, different times of our day to speak to others. Lord, help us to be bold, help us to be uh, kind, help us to be wise. But, Lord, help us to share your word. So, Lord, we just thank you for all that you give. We thank you for what you provide. We thank you for the inspiration you give us and the motivation as well. And we thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Post-its. Old brains on the table. <laughs> Old brains on the table. Okay, today is the 30th. I hear something amazing. It's already the 30th. Is there 31 days? Is there 31 days? There's 31 days this month. There is. As I say, it's already July, the end of July, and I didn't get to do Christmas in July. I have it all ready to go, and I didn't get to do it just because with everything going on. I had plans. But you never know. There's today and tomorrow still left in July. Who knows? All right. Our um, devotion is going to come from chapter 42 of Job, which we have not read chapter 42 yet. So I'm going to read chapter 42. It's kind of a little heads up, jumping ahead of what's to come in our reading. Chapter 42. Oh, goodness. More coffee, more coffee. So this is the last chapter of Job. Gosh, we're kind of jumping ahead. Okay. It says, Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do everything, and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. You asked, 
Who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Listen, please, and let me speak. You said, I will question you, and you shall answer me. I have heard you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Therefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. And so it was, after the Lord had spoken these words to Job, that the Lord said to Ilphaz the Temanite, My wrath is aroused against you and your two friends, for you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. Now, therefore, take for yourselves seven bulls and seven rams. Go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you. For I will accept him, lest I deal with you according to your folly, because you have not spoken of me what is right as my servant Job has. So Ilphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namanite, went and did as the Lord commanded them, for the Lord had accepted Job. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as many, I'm sorry, tw jo indeed the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. <clears throat> then all his brothers and all his sisters and all those who had been acquaintances before came to him and ate food with him in his house. And they consoled him and com comforted him for all the adversity that the Lord had brought upon him. Each one gave a piece of silver and each a ring of gold. Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than in his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jemima, Jemima the second, the name of the second, Keziah, and the name of the third, Karen Hapuch. In all the land were found no women so beautiful as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them an inheritance among their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and grandchildren for four generations. So Job died old and full of days. Can you imagine seeing four generations of, of your family? We're, like a lot of us, we, we get to see our grandchildren. Can you imagine four generations? Right? Like, like have you ever taken a generation picture of, like, uh, you, your, like, like, you have a child or a grandchild, and then it's you in the picture, and maybe your mom? Or your great or your great grandma? How would you say that? I have one that's it's um I have one that's uh, my daughter, me, my mom, my grandma, and my great grandma, five generations. But I have I don't think we have a picture since that of the generations. Children and grandchildren, four generations. So that's awesome. Anyhow, that one got me. I think I think it's awesome when you get to, you get those moments. We get those moments. And not long after we had that picture, my great grandma had passed. So it's like we got it in time to have it. And I don't have a lot of pictures, but I have that one. That's hilarious. I don't have a lot of pictures. You know, like... Uh, when you're a new parent and you're just starting out, depending on how you start out as a parent, you don't always have the means to do certain things. And I remember when my kids were little, we didn't have a lot of pictures because, you know, you had to afford the camera and the film and the developing of the pictures, which usually didn't happen. So anyway, okay, let's see. I should have took that bubble down. I'm sorry. Um, Rev, good morning, Rev. Good morning. How are you? How are you? 
Is things going better in the body? I'm hoping your body's doing better, sir. Okay, so here's our devotion. I'm cool just reading the book of Job. <laughs> okay, here's the devotion. And it comes from uh, 42, 12, and 13. And 12 and 13 is, Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than the beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. Okay, that's the devotion scripture. It says, Some people find the end of this story a bit unsatisfying. They're happy that Job came out so well, but wonder why didn't God answer the questions Job raised? I suggest it is because in the presence of the Lord, Job found every answer he needed. Right? Looking back over Job's incredible journey, I see six lessons for us. First, trials and difficulties prepare us for eternity. God wants to develop our faith. That means we don't often see with our eyes what he's doing. Second, Satan is silenced by submission to God's sovereignty. I'm convinced that when we get to heaven, we're going to discover that a great deal of the difficulty we experienced on earth was simply God proving to the enemy that we're not mercenaries, that we're not hirelings, and that he hasn't bought us off with blessing and ease, right? Right? When we go through difficulties and misunderstandings, hurts, pains, and problems financially, mentally, or emotionally, when we pers persevere, and like Job, do not curse God or rebel against him, even though we might have questions for him. If our attitude is one of worship, Satan is silenced. And when we see the Lord, he'll embrace us and say, Well done, good and faithful servant. You silenced Satan, and you didn't even know it. Satan was accusing you day and night, saying, If that marriage isn't healed, she'll curse you. If Job doesn't open. If that job doesn't open, he'll deny you. If that answer doesn't come, he'll backslide from you. But you did it. <clears throat> I allowed Satan to touch you within certain parameters to prove that you are not a mercenary, that you really do love me. Third, suffering produces clearer vision of ourselves and of God. In suffering, Job finally saw he was a vile man. So too, when we go through trials and don't react properly, when we hear ourselves saying foolish things, we realize that we're less mature than we thought and say, Lord, I indeed need you. I am vile. I need your blood. If you've gone through deep waters, your understanding, the vision of God, will increase exponentially. You'll see the Lord in a new dimension. What does this do? It makes us no longer fear suffering the way we once did. Jesus becomes so real and precious that we begin to reach the point where we say trials and testing are worth it because they allow me to see myself in vileness and the Lord in his holiness. I was about to say that. I was about to say that. Fourth, suffering produces compassion. It was when Job saw that he was vile himself that he embraced his friends. When do we have compassion for others who are hurting in trouble? After we've been through our own difficulties and trials. That is why Paul wrote, would write, Blessed be the Father who comforts us, that we may be able to comfort others with the comfort we ourselves have received. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4. Fifth, Suffering teaches us humility. It was when Job was humbled that he saw the Lord. Humiliation always brings revelation. For it is when we're going through hard times that we get fresh insight into the Lord and receive revelation of the Lord. Finally, suffering has a happy ending. Even if you're never healed, you will be in heaven. Even if you're poor on this earth, You'll live in a mansion in eternity. Peter talks about the trial of faith and about the angels who desire to look into these things. 1 Peter 1, 12. This means 
that what we go through is not just about us, it's about eternity. It was for the joy that awaited him that Jesus endured the cross, Hebrews 12, 2. Even on earth, at the end of the story, Job was given twice as much as he had before. That's always the way of the Lord. As he takes us from glory to greater glory, 2 Corinthians 3.18, from sorrow to unspeakable joy, John 16.20. These are awesome, guys. I think we should read them. I think we'll read them. I hope today was really big for you guys because it's awesome. It just, it's going over it after we're not even done yet. After we're not done yet. Okay. I'm all, I'm all excited inside. Okay. Second Corinthians one, second Corinthians chapter one, second Corinthians chapter one, verses three and four, one chapter three and four. It says, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our tribulation that that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God, right? We're able to relate to other people, right? And share with them the things that God's done for us because we can recognize that they're going through it like we've gone through it. Uh, that's that common thing that we can share with other people that we can relate to their suffering, right? Okay, and we can encourage them because we came through the same suffering, right? That's your testimony. A lot of times you don't realize that your testimony is an encouragement to other people because they see they're not the only one that got dirty, you, you know, and then we're healed and cleaned and restored. Okay, First Peter, uh, you know the part that talks about the humiliation? That was the next section. Uh, suffering teaches us humility, right? It's when we're hum humbled that we're able to see the Lord. Um, I will tell you that that's what we pray for our children, was that their fun wouldn't be fun no more, that they would come to the end of themselves so that they can um, reach out to the Lord. Because while they're not, while they're having fun, uh, they're very proud, pride, proud, proudful. What do you? prideful in their thinking that they don't need God, right? I don't need him right now. I'm busy with my life. So that's the, that we pray that for our children, that basically that they would uh, reach the point where their stuff's no more fun. They have to come to that place of humility. Because when you deny God, you're just walking in pride, right? And it doesn't matter what people tell you or share with you or how they love you when you're in that place, you're in that place. Um, let's see. Good morning. Good morning, Marlene. I almost said Melanie. Good morning, Marlene. Good morning, Yvette. Oh, no, don't worry, girl. Don't worry. If I cancel the live, it's usually just, I did give a little heads up. I think you weren't here to hear it. But um, to let you know that I was probably going to have to cancel yesterday anyway, because we had to go pick up a golf cart all the way down in uh, what was it called? Down by Marietta. It was farther than Marietta. Down that area. Anyway, and traffic was real bad yesterday. So it, it was, I had to cancel. Uh, good morning, Kathy. Good morning, good morning, girl. Okay. Uh, next scripture. So that was the thing about humility, right? Okay, First Peter. I want to read these because just just me telling you the scripture, it's not the same as reading the scripture, right? You have to hear the word, not just know the address, right? I could tell you an address, but if you never go to that house, how do you know? Right? How do you know? Okay, 1 Peter 1.12. So 1 Peter 1.12 says, To them it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us. Oh, come on. Read it right. It says, To them it was revealed that, not to themselves, but
but to us, as they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. And this was the part that was talking about, uh, Peter talks about the trial of faith and about the angels who desire to look into these things. Um, you know, when I when, when we when we read about uh, the devil coming and accusing, right? He comes to accuse, right? Well, the angels are there and they witness all this. And this is the stuff that angels want, they desire to look into. Like, this is part of the reason that we walk out our, our, how would you say? We live out our faith, right? Is so that the angels can understand that the free will that God gave us, the free will that God gave us, it's a real thing. It's not, we're not, what they, what did he say in here? We're not mercenaries. We have a free will to love God. We get to choose to love God. And in our choice to love God, even though trials and tribulation come, we walk that out. We live it out. It's not because, well, God gave me all these things. And so, yeah, I love him, right? I love, I love all of these benefits of loving God. So that even if the Lord takes it away, do we still love God? So this, these are the things that the angels are curious about. And so this is part of why we go through trials and tribulations is because um, to remove doubt. I'm telling you, it's all about the doubt, removing that doubt. It's our doubt. It's the angel's doubt, right? The Lord doesn't want any doubt. He wants it to be all reconciled within each one of us, even the angels, that uh, God is a God of love mercy and grace and that um we walk and love him of a free will not of a requirement out of a fakeness right just trying to behave to appease right it comes from a sincere place okay hebrews 12 2 hebrews 12 2 hebrews 12 2 says looking unto jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Uh, you remember I was telling you on that movie, Passion of the Christ, it shows him kneeling down by the water, and, and he sees the salvation of people, and that was the joy that was set before him. He saw that. Um, that, that, that scripture is awesome to me because that scripture came to life Way back then when I saw that, I was like, that was the joy that was set before him was you and I. He saw you and I in our, in our saved state. And that was the joy that was set before him that allowed him to endure the cross. Okay, uh, what was the next one? Corinthians, back to Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. Here you go. Bounce me about 318. 318 says, where did it go? But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So each time you go through trials, you're going from glory to glory. And don't forget that each time that you experience this, don't forget to share it with somebody else because that brings God the glory and the glory is his, right? Don't forget to share that with people because that brings God glory. Don't rob him of his glory. Don't rob him of his glory. These beautiful things that he does in your life, make sure you tell people. And it's not that you have to thump them over the head with a Bible. Just tell, just tell people the beautiful things that the Lord has done for you. That's testimony itself. It's not always about um, having your Bible in your hand and, in a sense, wiping it on people or hitting them with it or, you know, making them take a drink of it or anything. Sometimes it's just, you know what, this is what the Lord did for me. Just share that part, what he did for you. 
because it's huge. Because then people want to know this God that did this for you, right? Some people like to hear the truth of the word, and that is that's what intrigues them. And some people need to hear the love of God, what how he loved you, you know, 1620. Everybody's different. It says, these are Jesus's words. Most assuredly, I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice and you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. So those are Jesus's words. I'm going to read more of it to you, okay? I'm going to I'm going to read it from verse 20 down through uh 23. It says, "Most assuredly I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice, and you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. A woman when she is in labor has sorrow because of her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for the joy that a human being has been born into the world. Therefore, you now have sorrow, but I, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no, no one will take from you. And in that day you will ask me nothing, most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, that your joy may be full. pretty crazy and he's reconfirming the, the the way that we're supposed to make our petitions right in jesus name right okay let's see um sally says pray every day for my daughter she questions why god let her half brother sexually abuse her i'm so sorry sally and why the church we went to told me i needed to find a different church when my ex was having an affair with my supposed best friend and her Sunday school teacher when it came out. If they told you to find another church, it's because they were covering up sin. Why, where are you going? Okay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, baby, be careful. Okay. That threw me for a loop there, Sally. That threw me for a loop there, girl. Um, if they, yeah, if they told you to find another church, it's because they were covering sin. Not a good thing at all. Uh, I hope you did find another church. Um, and, and that is a hard question. That is one of those hard questions that people have that we can't always give them an answer and reconcile for them. And it all comes down to that free will. That free will. You remember I told you guys um, that I pray for my grandbabies that the Lord would protect them from the will of their parents? Because their parents have a free will. And, and this is with all children. The parents have a free will, and they're in charge. The child has been entrusted to them, right? And sometimes it's so hard to understand how God's going to work out those things that the devil meant for evil, how the Lord's going to work them for good. It's hard when you've gone through the evil to see the other side. It, I know that it's hard. I've not been there. I can't relate to that. But I know that it's a hard thing. Because if you can't relate to it, how do you speak to it? You know, it's hard. Um, but definitely, everybody, please pray for Sally's daughter. And I'm so sorry, Sally, that you went through all of that. There's um, 
That church was very compromised. They made many allowances. Many allowances. And that's not an uncommon thing to happen in. Um, it can happen anywhere, but it does happen in churches. Churches that are not grounded in the Lord. That's why it's very important to make sure that you check out your the church body that you're attending. And it's not saying throw all the churches away. It's saying you need to check. You need to be accountable to look for yourselves at the church that you're attending. Um, don't just look with your eyes. You need to ask the Lord, give me red flags. Let me know when something's not right. Um, you know, all of these things. And um, um, it's very important that we do that. Otherwise, we find ourselves in a place where we're easily deceived. We're, we're easily deceived. It's like we or we put the blinders on for ourselves, you know. So this is my last chapter of my Job experience. Rev, that is awesome. That is awesome. That is awesome. Good morning, Miriam. Good morning, good morning. Um, okay, so let me write this down on my, it's for her daughter. It's, and it's hard when you watch your children struggle. For reals, it's hard. And you can't, you can't make them understand. Um, this is uh, Sally. They have to come to that place where they stop blaming God and um, accept that they might not get the answer that they're looking for. There's, I mean, how do you answer that? If, if for some reason, if for some reason you were able to say to the person, well, it happened because of this, would that answer be satisfactory? It wouldn't, it wouldn't, because it would probably just cause more anger. Well, it happened because of this. It doesn't, it doesn't make that person feel any less, how would you say? When bad things happen to you, you don't feel very cared for, important, or uh, your value. You feel like you had no value. Why did this thing happen to me? I must not be worth anything. You have those ucky feelings. And for someone to say, well, it happened because of this, it still didn't fix that. It's It might be an answer, but it still didn't fix that that those feelings. So it's something that only the Lord can reconcile with that person that, He's greater <clears throat> and that they need to just trust and rely upon him to to uh, reconcile some things, heal some things, and they have to be willing to surrender it to the Lord so he can heal it for them. And a lot of times, I know this sounds the weirdest thing ever, but it's it's in our Bible. A lot of times it's because we we can't express forgiveness. And that forgiveness keeps us in that bitter state of despair. It keeps us in that place where we, we won't let the Lord reconcile it because we can't forgive. It's tough. It's tough. Oh, sorry, Yvette. He's gone. He was getting around and getting ready. Uh, Nana Tink. First time I believe I made it here. Aw, Welcome, Nana Tink. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Um, yes, prayers, prayers, prayers. Uh, Marlene, see, everybody will be praying, Sally. Um, daughter.
Okay. Um, let's pray for Sally right now. And also for you, Sally, not just your daughter, also for you. And I'm not saying you're in a spot. I'm just saying you need prayer too. Okay. Okay. Uh, can I suggest to you, Sally, um, look up, look up, um, uh, online. You can find it online. Okay. And I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to point you to, um, the one that this book is from this, this one right here is from, because the way he teaches, it's very, um, how would you say? There's a gentleness to it. There's a gentleness to it, okay? Um, and this is John Corson, and he's Applegate Christian Fellowship. Applegate Christian Fellowship. Oh, let me type it in real quick. And you can pull it up online. Um, I, I believe, I'm not positive. But I think that he might go live. I don't know if he goes live or not. But you can pull up online. And um, you can watch. Did I spell that right? I think I spelled that right. And it's John. J-O-N, right? Yeah. John Corson. Um, it's just Bible. It's not a bunch of fluff. It's not a bunch of any of that. It's just Bible. And um, just because um, what, what you shared, um, it you don't need to be hammered. Um, there's different style. How would you say? There's different styles that people teach. And there's... Um, I know, I know for me, some, some of them, I can't, I can't do that, like, really loud, crazy, uh, some people like that, I, I don't like that, um, and then there's some people that they need all the stories, you know, all the, I don't, I don't like that, for me, it's the word, just, just teach me the word, that's it, and this, uh, John Corson, it's, there's a gentle approach that's there, and so I think that you will maybe like that, and go from there. You can always find online, um, and I'm not saying they're the only one, but a good majority of the Calvary Chapel, uh, it's it's uh, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. It's Bible. It's you're learning the word. It's not a bunch of um, man-made doctrines that they're trying to get you to do all these things and send all this money and all this crap, because it's crap. Um, it's just the word. You're just learning the word. You're just being um, built up. Okay. So that would be my suggestion on that because everybody needs, and for anybody, check it out. Um, I know for our church, you're more than welcome to check out this. We do stream. Um, uh, Calvary Chapel. I know people are looking for um, home churches right now. And it's hard because where do you go, right? Um, a lot of people, it's hard because you give up trying to find desert. How do you spell desert? D-E-S-E-R-T. Sorry, I had a brain fart. Um, you can check out. This is where I attend, okay? Um, Calvary Chapel High Desert. And um, Pastor Chris, Chris teaches on Sundays right now, sometimes our, um, I guess you would call it our, our pastor is Dennis Davenport. Right now, Pastor Chris is, I believe he's going to be coming into our pastor. You know how our pastor is older. And so I think it's getting time where he's going to step down from being the, um, how would you say, the main teacher, the main pastor, I guess is what you could call it. Um, and then um, Chris is going to step into that, and Chris teaches amazing. It's amazing. So if you want to check out on Sundays, Sundays it's live. You can check it out Sunday and listen, and it's it's fantastic. Right now we're in the Book of Kings, so you know we had read through the Book of Kings with our um, devotion, and then you're going to hear more information on that. It's fantastic. Anyway, I'm just saying. 
And I'm not just saying that because I go there. Because there's times where I'll hear a teacher, I'll be like, mm, no. But, okay, Miriam, sorry, I'm not skipping. Please pray for me and my family. My mom is home now, is in hospice. Really hard time feeling. I'm so sorry, Miriam. I'm so sorry, Miriam. Okay, Mary, we'll pray. We're going to pray for you guys. <clears throat> so just keep that in mind, Sally. There's ways. There's ways. Right? Right. Yes, you're not supposed to be there. Okay. What was the question, Sally? What was the question, Sally? Uh, Sally, uh, she wanted prayer for her daughter. It wasn't necessarily a question. It was a prayer for her daughter because of the circumstance that she's went through. And then also that she needs a new church. Um, right, Kathy? We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes. Yes. And that was what Job realized in full. He realized in full. Like, he, he didn't go about sinning his face off. But in the presence of a holy God, he was still vile, right? That's what he realized, each one of us, right? Even though we think we might have our act together today, we're still vile, right? Um, they, read a, they read a freeze. Oh, the, the, the things froze? I'm so sorry. Okay, Sally says uh, she was eight years old when it happened. Her dad told her never tell anyone. Took two weeks to get it out of her. And then her dad told her it was her fault. Her brother got in trouble and had to be on probation. And see. Oh, my gosh. I am so sorry, Sally. That's a straight predator. A straight predator. And the worst part is it was known. It was known. Dad knew. Oh, gosh. And, and basically condoned and more than likely because dad was involved in stuff oh my gosh okay that's a heavy thing i'm sorry that stuff i don't that's why it i know that's why the lord didn't let me go look for children was because i probably wouldn't have looked the other way i i, I wouldn't have necessarily let the law of the land have its way Mm. It, mm. And people don't realize that when that stuff happens, it's it's a it's it's more than just um a physical violation. It breaks something within a person. It's 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 huge. It's not um oh well you know it was just a. You know, like a person, grown person goes and has a one night stand. It's not like that. It's nothing like that. It was a violation. It was a deliberate violation. It was, it was deliberate. It wasn't a oops. Yeah, it, sorry. I get really angry about that stuff. Um, Nana Tink says, many online now since COVID. I sometimes watch April and Jeff Sunday mornings. Jeff is the pastor. Oh, okay. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people are watching um, online. Um, I'm not all about the fear. I don't think you should watch online because of fear. I think that if you're looking for something, that's that's one thing. If you're unable, that's another thing, but not out of fear. Not out of fear. If anybody's living with fear, um, that needs to be that needs to be something surrendered to the Lord so he can fix that because we're not supposed to be um, isolated and fear keeps you isolated. And I attend Water of Life in Fontana and has online. Yeah, a good majority of them, a good majority of them 
started streaming. Yes, because a lot of their people uh, wouldn't come to church, but a lot of people have gotten complacent at the same time to where now you're not going and you're not doing that thing that the Lord says, do not forsake the gathering of yourselves together as is the manner of some. Why? Because when you don't go and fellowship and you cut yourself off, you're isolating yourself and you are now weak. You are now weak. Watching online, you're getting the word, but you're still not getting the fellowship. That fellowship was very important. Always remember, Jesus didn't, Jesus didn't, uh, he came to be personal. He came to be personal. He was personal with the disciples. He was personable with all the people that was there. And when he went to weddings, um, he went to um, the baptisms. He went to the streets. He went to people's homes. Um, he was our example of, of fellowship. He was our example. And then he told, tells us, don't forsake doing these things. Don't be afraid. He went and ate with sinners. Didn't care if he was mocked. He went in amongst those that were considered dirty, right? You had the Pharisees that would say, oh, what are you sitting with them for? They're dirty. He went in amongst these things. And um, it's not saying that we physically are doing those things. But when we go to church, we're in amongst people that are dirty. We're all dirty. We're all vile. Some of us just can put a dress on and dress it up and pretend like it's all clean. It's still vile. It's still vile. But the Lord needs us to be uh, in fellowship with one another because in doing so, we encourage each other. We strengthen one another. Uh, we learn from one another. Um, sometimes we're sandpaper for one another. Um, you're not going to like every single person. You're not going to like every single person. but we can still love one another in the sense that you're my brother and sister in Christ. And because you're here and because I'm here, we are the church. We are here for other people. So there might be two or three people that you see on a regular basis. And when you don't see them, um, the Lord will use that in you to reach out, right? To be hands and feet. Um, even if it's somebody at church and you just happen to be the one that always smiles at them or shakes their hand and nobody else does. So it's not just about going to the church. It's not about making that church something. It's the fellowship that we do within there with, with one another. That's what we're called to do. That's what we're called to do. Okay, let's see. Did I miss anything else? Okay. Am I caught up? I'm caught up. Okay. So let's pray for Sally and not just for Sally's daughter, but Sally as well, because you're carrying something. You're carrying something. And then we'll also pray for Miriam. Okay. Um, Lord, I just want to come to you and ask that, um, that you would do those amazingly huge things in the life of Sally's daughter, that she would see that her value is huge, Lord, that you value her so much. And that, Lord, even though these things that have happened to her, that she's probably not going to get an answer for in this life. The only answer is free will. And, Lord, sometimes that doesn't, that doesn't fix the problem. It doesn't fix the problem. It's the answer, but it doesn't fix the problem. So, Lord, I just pray that Lord, you would draw her to you, that you would show her a great many ways that you love her and that she would be willing to let you touch those things in her life. That you would be able to bring her to a place where she's able to forgive, Lord, where she would be in a place where she's able to forgive. And that, Lord, that you could work through all of those hurts, all of the bitterness that's been sitted inside of her. Lord, we know that that comes from the devil and he'll try to beat beat down as much as he can and he'll even put the bat in your hand so that you can beat yourself so lord we just pray that you would come against that that you would draw her to you that you would allow her to experience um the peace and the joy of healing the healing of the wounds that are deep within her
And Lord, we also pray for Sally and all of the things that she has endured as well due to the relationship that was in her life, Lord, that you would bring the reconciliation that she needs between um, just situations that have occurred, Lord, that you would heal um, and fortify her relationship with her daughter, Lord. There's things that I'm sure that they're there and they're in the background. And Lord, we ask that you would put your hand upon them. Lord, that you would also uh, bring Sally to a place where she's able to get plugged in and encouraged and also um, just fed your word on a regular basis, Lord. That's what we pray for most and that you would draw her daughter as well. Lord, I pray that um, whoever that she is able to connect with, that it is a biblical source. It's all Bible. It's no fluff. It's just your word and the love of your word would come through to her. So Lord, we do lift up Sally. And Lord, we ask that if um, this right here touched anybody else's life today, Lord, that you would touch their lives as well. We always know that we're not the only one. So um, Lord, I just do pray that you always keep this a safe place for people to be able to share. And Lord, that you would protect them in that sharing. Because Lord, we make ourselves vulnerable when we put ourselves out there and we lay things out. So Lord, I do pray, pray that you would keep your hand upon Sally that you would um, just surround her with angels that are going to minister to her in ways that she would never have even thought. And uh, the same for her daughter. Lord, we also want to pray for Miriam. Um, her mama just got to come home. And the situation with her mama coming home is that she has the hospice nurses there. And Lord, we know that this time of, of, um, of a person's life can be very difficult but lord we pray that your hand would be there and we pray that your mercy would be there amongst the family we ask that your will would be done in all things and lord i just ask that you would give miriam and her mama just some really special moments that they would be able to um love one another in such a way that there's no there's no um that all the, all the negativity would be gone, Lord, that there would only be those beautiful moments between her and her mom and the entire family, Lord. Let peace be among the family right now. And even after, if there's any uh, feelings of whatever in the midst of the family, that they're all reconciled right now. And so we do pray for Miriam. We ask that you would just be with her right now, that you would comfort her, that you would fill her with joyous moments even those ones where they're able to giggle and laugh for a moment. So Lord, we thank you for Miriam. We thank you for Sally. We ask that you would tend to their cares. And in all things, your will would be done, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> and the hard part for me is I should have prayed for the offenders, and I did not. See where, where my grace lacks? Because even though this vile thing was done, even though this terrible thing was done, we're still supposed to pray for our enemies. And that's a hard thing. That's a hard thing. That's a learned thing. You can only do that with God's grace. There's, there's no other way to do that. Okay, let's see. And that might be a step. She is not talking or awake. Oh, Miriam. I'm so sorry, Miriam. Those moments can still be had, though. Those moments can still be had. That day she hasn't been. Um, have you read to her? Have you sat and read to her? Don't have to be long, drawn-out things. But have you sat and read to her? Because that's a cool, that's a cool thing. It's a cool thing. If you can do that. I have to get positioned for my back. Okay. Ooh, today's a heavy day, guys. Today's a heavy day. Not a bad thing. We, we're supposed to have those days where we bear with one another. And, you know what I mean? The Lord impresses things upon us to be concerned about. Helps us take our focus off ourselves, right? No, you, you know what? Share, share a, a little devotion with her. Share a little devotion with her. It doesn't have to be crazy. You can even pull one up on your phone. It doesn't have to be a book. 
just maybe a scripture a scripture when you're sharing because the lord will speak to you at the same time that you're ministering to your mama maybe read some of the psalms they're very encouraging okay um here we go i hope that helps i hope that's a a, a doable thing and and i'm i'm not i i've not read to nobody but i'm just saying to me for me i think that would be the thing that i would do now that i know the lord prior to knowing the lord i probably would have never thought of that but okay today our um creation one oh I feel like I'm choking. Okay. Um, today is inspired by microbiology. Um, Nana Tink, we do a few things here. Um, I Today is a little different. Every day is different. It's not always the same, but uh, for the most part, it's the same. Uh, the first devotion I share with you, let me explain this really quick, is the first one I share with you is a day of feasting. This is taking us uh, from Joshua through the Old Testament. Um, right now, we just finished the last one for the book of Job. Um, and then after that one, we'll do this one right here, which is inspired evidence. It's just a small devotion on creation. And then usually after that, we'll, uh, we're will reading through the book of Job. So we're still reading through the book of Job. And then we'll read the Proverbs for the day, which is whatever chapter lines up with whatever day of the month we are on. And we'll just go back through that every month. So that's pretty much what what I share with you in the morning. Everything else is what everybody shares and we all have input. The day of feasting. Stephanie, um, I got this online. I got this online. Um, he does not look like this anymore. He's much older now. I would say he's at least 20. 30 years older than this now. This is John Corson from Applegate Fellowship. Um, his testimony will blow your mind as well. Um, and a lot of times you can look up their testimonies um, as well. <clears throat> but um, <clears throat> I got it online. There is a, one for the Old Testament, which is this one. And then there's also one for the New Testament. There's also one for the New Testament. So if you like to go through the New Testament, you can pick up the Day of Fasting. Uh, day of Feasting is uh, this one, and I think it's Day of Fasting is the New Testament. I can't remember what it's called. One's fasting, one's feasting, I think. Um, but one is geared Old Testament, one is geared New Testament. But I got it. You can get it right online at Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yes, Nana Tink. Um, so Eastern Standard Time, it would be 10 a.m. So I'm in California. So for me, it's 7 a.m. when I come on. So Eastern Time, it would be 10 a.m. But yes, every morning, unless something prohibits me from getting in the chair, whether like if I'm out of town and I don't have any good streaming signal, I won't go live. Um, yesterday, I had to leave the house before 7 a.m., and so I wasn't able to come on. I tried doing it on the road one time. It doesn't work. I can't read in the car. I get really car sick. And the camera, it's just, it doesn't work in the car. So I just opt to not come live that morning. And hopefully you guys will at least keep up on your Proverbs, right? At least keep up on your Proverbs. Because that's, that you're still getting some word in. And Proverbs is good word for the morning. Yes. Thank you, Kathy. Yes. Yes. And this is a double stream. So if you see me mentioning people and you don't like who she talking to, I double stream almost every single time I go live. Um, unless I decide to go ahead and do an auction. Um, every time I go live, it's a double stream, Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So there's people on the Facebook side and people on the YouTube side. Part of that is because for me, um, I started out on Facebook, and so as I started to uh, 
go live on YouTube, I've incorporated the two together because I have people that like Facebook and I have people that like YouTube and I want all to be included. So um, I do have your bell notification on, but I don't always get it. Um, it. Did you click all? You have to click the all. If you just click be notified, it's going to go according to your browsing history, your whatever your habits are. But if you click all, you should get it like 20 minutes prior. You should get it 20 minutes prior to me going live. And then you should also get the one that tells you that it is live. Um, but you have to click all. Always remember when you click the bell, you have to click the bell a second time and go up to the top where it says all. There's like three choices. Okay, here we go. This one is inspired by microbiology and we don't have a picture. Sometimes there's a picture on the page and I'll share it. <clears throat> so this one says, even rude, the name is proudly printed on the outside of an outboard motor. We know that it took teams of engineers to design and make this motor, all so that we can move through the water in our boats. We can see the same marvelous motor engineering in miniature in the spinning flagellum, tiny hair-like structure of bacteria such as E. coli. How does a bacteria move through its watery environment? It uses a motor-driven propeller. This flagellum can stop, start, change directions, and go in reverse while spinning its propeller at up to 100,000 RPM revolutions per minute. Bacterial motors are almost 100% efficient, while man-made electric motors are 75 to 95% efficient. When scientists examine the flagellum, they discovered the same parts that we see in a motor. A rotor, a stator, a stator o-rings, bushings, and a drive shaft. Forty different proteins are used to assemble this little motor. These flagellum motors are so tiny that eight million of them would fit in the width of a human hair. Can you imagine that? The ultimate in miniaturization. Evolutionists say this all came about by accident over millions of years. However, if any part is missing, the flagellum motor could not work. If your outboard motor did not have a rotor, O-rings, bushings, etc., or if they were in the wrong place, the motor would not work. All the parts had to be there right from the beginning in order for the motor to perform. The same applies to the miniature motorized flagellum. All the parts had to be there from beginning in the right order. So this summer, as you putter around the lake with your outboard motor, think of the bacteria puttering around in its watery environment with its own built-in motor that was designed by God. So when they, here's your scripture. So when they had rowed out three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near the boat, and they were afraid. John 6, 19. I'm not sure why they put that scripture with that, that one. Hmm. I'm not sure about that one. Why they put that scripture with that one. So when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near the boat, and they were afraid. What does it have to do with this bacteria? This motor? I don't know. That went through me for a little bit of a... Maybe somebody else gets it. That would be fantastic if you get it. Uh, YouTube doesn't do their best. Oh, yeah. I don't doubt that. I don't doubt it. But yeah, it pretty much for the most part, I'm, it's same time every morning. Same time every morning. Good morning, Athena. Oh, by the way, Athena, I got your message. It got buried over the weekend. I'm assuming that's when it came in. So I apologize. It was buried in amongst garbage. Um, I don't know why I get so much garbage texts. I didn't sign up for texts, but I get them. 
um, and yours got buried in amongst them, and I'm so sorry. But I did get it. I did get it. As I was trying to delete, 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 I saw it. But I was deleting, so I didn't answer yet. Sally, laugh out loud today is the yeah that one is did it throw you guys for a loop too? I don't understand why I don't understand the uh, connection there. I'm I don't get it. Again, I'm not. I don't get anything. I don't get everything. I like the fact that that he that Jesus was walking on the water. I think it's amazing, but I don't know what that has to do with this. He don't need a motor. I'm just kidding. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. We have to ask the writer. I have no idea. Okay. Let's get to the book of Job. Let's get to the book of Job. And I know our devotion already got to the end. And I'm just like, whoa. Because we're supposed to walk through this and, and, and be part of the conversation here. You know, as far as hearing what's going on. Okay. It's cool in the end you find out, in a sense, they were all wrong. Right? In a sense, they were all wrong. Job needed the proper perspective, and his friends needed the proper perspective. And both were talking in a way that they were, they were saying, no, I'm not. I'm right. I'm right. Right? Okay, so chapter 27 is where we're at. And I'm going to do chapter 27, 28. 27 and 28. Okay, we'll read two chapters today. 27 and 28. Okay. Um, yay! Right? Right? You uh, Hopefully, the Lord... Hey, Scooter! Um, hopefully, the Lord is working to where when we miss, we miss not only do we miss each other, but we miss that thing that we've made regular to where... We feel like something's not right, right? When you miss it. Yes. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, that's how you start to, that's when you know that you have community. When you know that you're having that fellowship, that community, that accountability, um, that, that place where you can share. You know, you need, everybody needs it. We all need it. The Lord put it. A need within us that we need that from one another and hopefully as you have that here it's a good thing it's a good thing and then when you do miss it you're like hey i need this right i need this most important i need the word i need the word so for now if this is your source that's awesome don't forget to check me though please always check me don't just well rita said this no 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 don't put rita's name in at all the Lord says this. Always make sure that you're, it's the Lord that you're hearing, not Rita. Okay? Because Rita rambles. Rita gets in the way. Okay, chapter 27 and 28. It says, Moreover, Job continued his discourse and said, As God lives, who has taken away my justice? And the Almighty, who has made my soul bitter? As long as my breath is in me, and the breath of God in my nostrils, my lips will not speak wickedness nor my tongue utter deceit. Far be it from me that I should say you are right. Till I die, I will not put away my integrity from me. My righteousness I hold fast and will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me as long as I live. May, the, may my enemy be like the wicked and he who rises up against me like unrighteous, the unrighteous. For what is the hope of the hypocrite? Though he may gain much, if God takes away his life. Though he may gain much, if God takes away his life. Will God hear his cry when trouble comes upon him? Will he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he always call on God? I will teach you about the hand of God. What is with the Almighty, I will not conceal. Surely all of you have seen it. Why then do you behave with complete nonsense? This is the portion of a wicked man with God and a heritage of oppressors received from the Almighty. If his children are multiplied, it is for the sword. 
and his offspring shall be shall not be satisfied with bread. Those who survive him shall be buried in death, and their wall, their win, their widows shall not weep. Though he heaps up silver like dust and piles up clothing like clay, <clears throat> he may pile it up, but just but the just will wear it, and the innocent will divide the silver. He builds his house like a moth, like a booth which a watchman makes. The rich man will lie down, but not be gathered up. He opens his eyes, and he is no more. Terrors overtake him like a flood. A tempest steals him away in the night. The east wind carries him away, and he is gone. It sweeps him out of his place. It hurls against him and does not spare. He flees desperately from its power. Men shall clap their hands at him and shall hiss him out of his place. And chapter 28 says, Surely there is a mine, surely there is a mine for silver, and a place where gold is refined. Iron is taken from the earth, and copper is smelted from ore. Man puts on man puts an end to darkness and searches every recess for ore in the darkness and the shadow of death. He breaks open a shaft away from people in places forgotten by feet. They hang far away from men. They swing to and fro. As for the earth, it comes. As for the earth from it comes. Bread. What in the world? As for the earth from it comes bread. If I would just read it right. But underneath it is turned up as a by fire. <clears throat> Its stones are the source of sapphires, and it contains gold dust. The path no bird knows, nor has the falcon's eye seen it. The proud lions have not trotted on it, nor has the fierce lion passed over it. He puts his hand on the flint. He overturns the mountains at the roots. He cuts out channels in the rocks, and his eye sees every precious thing. He dams up the streams from trickling. What is hidden he brings forth to light. But where can wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man does not know its value, nor is it found in the land of the living. The deep says, it is not in me. And the sea says, it is not with me. It cannot be purchased for gold, nor can silver be weighed for its price. It cannot be valued in gold or gold of Ophir in precious onyx or silver. Neither gold nor crystal can equal it, nor can it be exchanged for jewelry or of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or quartz, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia cannot equal it, nor can it be valued in pure gold. From where, then, does wisdom come? And where is the place of understanding? It is hidden from the eyes of all living and concealed from the birds of the air. Destruction and death say, we have heard a report about it with our ears. God understands its way, and he knows its place. For he looks to the ends of the earth, and he sees under the whole heavens to establish a weight for the wind and apportion the waters by measure. When he made a law for the rain and a path for the thunderbolt, then he saw wisdom and declared it. He prepared it. Indeed, he searched it out. And to man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. The commentary says, where is wisdom found? It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This is Proverbs 9, 10. We read this all the time, right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The Bible says concerning Jesus Christ, in him are hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Colossians 2, 3. As we seek Jesus, more and more of those treasures of wisdom and knowledge we get, right? Because they're hidden in him. 
And the only way to access them is to know him, right? The more you know him, the more wisdom, the more knowledge you have. <clears throat> Do you guys sometimes get a little bit lost in like, I guess you can say the poetry of it? It happens. It happens. Um, um, here's, it says, uh, chapter 27, verse 6, Job declared, my righteousness I hold fast. He didn't feel personal condemnation for some kind of crime he was suspected of committing. This position is ours in Christ Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8, 1. When you know that you're secure with the Lord, you know that there's no condemnation. You're not being condemned. You might be getting tried as far as the trials and the tribulations, but you're not being condemned. It is sad that so many Christians live under constant condemnation. They have a very sensitive nature, and Satan plays upon that and makes them feel guilty all the time. If you're God's child, he wants you to know that you're forgiven. You've been pardoned and cleansed. I would add to this statement of Job, My heart shall not reproach me as long as I live in Christ Jesus. What a glorious place to live. The Lord doesn't want you to feel guilty, right? Once you're forgiven, he doesn't want you to be condemned anymore. He's removed that. It's the devil that comes and lies to you that you're still being condemned. Um, here, so I'm just going to read you the commentary for this one in case anybody needs a little bit more explanation. <clears throat> so verses 16 through 19. If you're trying to understand the meaning of life in the framework of the day-to-day, temporal existence. You're not going to understand the workings of God in your life. God doesn't work in our lives for the daily benefits. He's concerned about the eternal benefits. Now, I want to make an investment today that I'm going to pay dividends tomorrow. God has made an investment in me, and the things he is doing in me are for my eternal good. Unless I can see them as they relate to eternity, I'm not going to understand them. As the psalmist wrote, when I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their end. This is so pertaining to you guys, Sally. Psalm 73, 16 through 17. I live for the moment, but God is dealing with me for, eter for the eternal. And thus, as Job spoke of God, he saw that God was working in this eternal perspective. Um, Psalm 73, when I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. When you have the proper perspective of what your salvation provides and what the end of those that don't have salvation, it helps you to be able to forgive because without forgiveness, the end without forgiveness, you wouldn't even wish it on your enemy. Part of you says that you would still wish it on them. You know the saying, um, oh, they need to go to hell for what they've done. Okay. We're not supposed to be condemning anybody to hell because if you really had an understanding of hell and that it's eternity, it's eternal separation from God. There's no, there's no second chance from it. It is what it is. When you fully understand what separation from God is, you don't even want that for your enemy. Like you, you don't, you don't wish it for your enemy. Right. It brings you to a place where now you're hoping that that person comes to a place of forgiveness. Yes, here they may pay a price, but for all eternity, you, you really don't wish that on people. 
you would wish that they would repent and be saved, right? Um, hey, Ella, welcome, welcome. Okay, so that was Job, okay? And then in here also, it says, there is an interesting correlation between the book of Job, the Psalms, and the Proverbs. And uh, Solomon says, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof of fine gold. All right, on to our Proverbs. Speaking of Proverbs. And we are chapter 30. We are chapter 30. Okay. And it says, the, the words of Agar, Agar, the son of Jeketh, his utterance. This man declared to Ithiel, to Ithiel and Ukal. Surely I am more stupid than any man and do not have the understanding of a man. I neither learned wisdom nor have knowledge of the Holy One. Who has ascended into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has bound the waters in, the, in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? And what is his name? And what is his son's name? If you know, every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. Remember I tell you, check me, guys. Don't just, you check every person. Two things I request of you. Deprive me not before I die. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Give me either poverty, I'm sorry, give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me, lest I be full and deny you. And say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal, and profane the name of my God. Do not malign a servant to his master, lest he curse you, and you be found guilty. There is a generation that curses its father, and does not bless its mother. There is a generation that is pure in its own eyes, yet is not washed from, from its filthiness. Guys, we're in that generation. <clears throat> there is a generation whose teeth are like swords and whose fangs are like knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. The leech has two daughters, give and give. There are three things that are never satisfied, four never say enough. The grave, the barren womb, the earth that is not satisfied with water, and the fire never says enough. The eye that mocks his father and scorns obedience to his mother. The ravens of the valley will pick it out. And the young eagles will eat it. There are three things which are too wonderful for me. Yes, four which I do not understand. The way of an eagle in the air. The way of the serpent on a rock. The way of a ship in the midst of the sea. And the way of a man with a virgin. This is the way of an adulterous woman. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I have done no wickedness. For three things, the earth is per perturbed. Yes, for four, it cannot bear up. A fool when he is filled with food, a hateful woman when she is married, and a maidservant who succeeds her mistress. There are four things which are little on the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their food in the summer. Remember I told you I think we're going to have a very cold winter because the ants were atrocious this year. The rock badgers are a feeble folk, yet they make their homes in the crags. The locusts have no king, yet they all advance in ranks. The spider skillfully grasps with its hands, and it is in the king's palaces right? Even the most lofty building, you'll still find some spiders, right? There are three things which are majestic in pace. Yes, four which are stately in walk. A lion, which is mighty among beasts, 
and does not turn away from any, a greyhound, a male goat also, and a king whose troops are with him. If you have been foolish in exalting yourself, or if you have devised evil, put your hand on your mouth. For as the churning of milk produces butter, and the wringing the nose produces blood, so the forcing of wrath produces strife. We, we are in the days of the generation that this is talking about right here. <clears throat> we have a generation where the children, children of various ages, uh, there's no, there's no reverence for the parent. It's a very terrible thing. And it's terrible what will happen to that generation. The eye that mocks his father and scorns obedience to his mother. The ravens of the valley will pick it out and the young eagles will eat it. I think I shared that with you guys the last time I read it. It's very, very rough. The consequence of disobedience. The consequence of disobedience. And it's always the same consequence. It's not something new. Look at when the children of Israel disobeyed the Lord. Look at the consequence that came from their disobedience. It was always a heavy thing. Give my coffee a little swirl. The bottom's super hot. There we go. So, does anybody have any shares? Does anybody have any shares? Um, I still haven't seen my Aunt Janet. Athena, are you still here, girl? Are you still listening? I know I probably should call myself, but have you heard from your mama? I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm terrible at communication, so girl, I'm no, no this side or the other. Just, just asking. Did anybody have any questions? Were you guys able to read your Proverbs yesterday by chance? Has anybody picked up that habit that you need your Proverbs every day? So the cool thing is, so this is cool. Uh, tomorrow, because we have 31 days this month, we're going to get the 31. A lot of months, we're not going to get chapter 31 because there's not a 31 in the month. But tomorrow, we will get chapter 31. It's fantastic. Alrighty. So did anybody have any shares? Did we cover a good majority of stuff today? I really like that there was extra scriptures in the devotion part. That one is always great when that happens. Okay. Because you're quiet all of a sudden. What happened? What happened? What happened? <clears throat> Stephanie says, I need my Proverbs every day. When we don't come together, I feel like my whole day is off. Oh. I mean, not yay, but yay. You know what I mean, right? Like you're, you're, you're gaining from the fellowship and community and the accountability. You're gaining from that, right? To where when when we miss it, you notice it. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Uh, my Aunt Alma, pray for her. Pray for her. My Aunt Alma doesn't come in here on the morning. I'm not sure if she's unaware. Because she always knows when I'm live during the daytime. Um, I don't know. She might be quietly watching. I don't know. Um, usually the amount of comments that come through here kind of match with the amount of views. So I don't think so, but, um, pray for her, pray for her. Um, I don't have, how would you say? 
I don't know and I don't have the assurance that she has accepted the Lord. I don't know that. I don't know that. Yeah. But but always pray for them. A good majority of my family, um, they're not they're not saved. At least I don't have that assurance. I, I don't have that assurance. And I know that my mom lives there with my Aunt Alma, like on the property. And my mom believes in something else. So I'm sure that my mom is like the thing that she hears a good majority of time. Um, I know that they don't, they don't. How would you say? I don't know how much they talk about what my mom believes. I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to, to talk without being tactful. I feel like I'm beating around the bush because I just want to call it what I want to call it. and But that's not very tactful, you know. And so I don't want to be uh, insensitive because, you know, you guys, there's some of you, you might be in that same situation. You have family members and they, they believe what they believe and, and it's not right. It's not truth. It's not, it's not God's word. They make their own word and they believe their own word. But, um, yeah, so yeah, I don't have that. I was hoping, I was hoping that we'd get to go over and visit. Um, so if Eric gets one more break, we might, we might get to go. I don't know. I thought we were going to go um, away and we ended up just going for the family thing. And then that was it. So everything keeps changing. I don't always like change. It's not change. It's, uh, it's not change. I like change. I don't like all of the back and forth. Okay, this, okay, that, okay, this, okay, that, okay, yeah, this, okay, no, that, okay, that, I don't like that part. Like, I don't mind change, like you change something and you do something different, okay. But the whole ping pong ball thing, I don't like that stuff. Lord gives us assurance, of, right, right, Kathy? Yes, you know it. Like, everything within you has peace. Like, you know it. You'll have those, you'll, you'll even have that moment where you're able to, like, ask them. Like you straight ask them and you'll know it. The answers, it's, it's either yes or no, <laughs> you'll, you'll get, you're going to have the answer. So that assurance is fantastic. Um, not having it, not having it, you just sit and wonder, you know, you sit and you hope, you always hope because if you believe that God is fair and just, and you believe that he gives everybody the same opportunities, um, you hope. You hope that they, until their last breath, you hope that they say yes. And then hopefully you'll see them again, right? Bible tells us we'll be surprised. And I think a lot of that's going to come from the fact that we have hope um, because we don't know. And so when we do get to see people that we knew and we're surprised, oh, I didn't, I never knew, you know, it's going to be that surprise. I never knew. Um. Or there's going to be those that they didn't make it and you would have thought that they would have because maybe their outward, what you saw outwardly was not what was inward, right? You know, there's those people that the Bible says, the Lord's going to say, get away from me. I never knew you. You're, an inwork, you're a worker of iniquity, right? It, they were never truly surrendered to the Lord. They were never forgiven, they just walked in something that looked good to others. And so they walked in that for whatever their reward was here. Some people do things with motives of being rewarded by others, right? Acknowledged places of authority. And the heart was never the Lord's. It was whatever they were trying to gratify with their position or whatever. And so the Bible tells us, don't be surprised who you see and who you don't see. That means that not everybody that you assume is saved just because maybe they go to your church. Not everybody in that church is saved. 
there's a lot of pew people that just sit in the pews and uh, punch their time card with the Lord and never have surrendered to the Lord. Um, there's been testimonies of people at church. They've been at church, say, 15 years. And then all of a sudden one day they um, they accepted the Lord. And you're thinking, you've been here for 15 years. How did you not accept the Lord? And they were, I never surrendered to the Lord. I had never accepted the forgiveness. I never, I just never made the Lord my personal savior. And and it's and it's odd when you hear that because you're thinking everybody in the church is saved. Why would you be here? Right? But some people just like what they hear and but they never accepted and then never seed, never went in, never rooted, and it never bared fruit. So we don't always understand how every every uh person's works but the lord knows the lord knows <clears throat> stephanie says when people i know don't believe the way i do i try to focus on the fact that they are at least seeking even if they are on the wrong path they're still walking and i pray that they will find the right path right right there's exactly there's some they don't even they're not even looking I was one of those people. I was never looking. I didn't want anything to do with anything because of the way that I was uh, brought up. I didn't want anything to do with anything. Yeah. But that is true. That is true. They're, they're, they are seeking. Hopefully they just find the right path. That's a good way to look at it. Mm -hmm. I always pray for people. Like, like my family, it's mostly my family. I don't have, I don't have too many friends that aren't saved, I would say. I mean, I have acquaintances, but acquaintances aren't friends. Acquaintances are just people that you know, to an extent, you know, but a friend, I would say most of my friends are saved because that's who I choose for my friends. But um, family, I think for family, I just always pray that the Lord will We'll send someone that they can hear because everybody hears differently. You know, everybody like, okay, good example. I can tell my husband, don't eat that. It's not good for you. And he'll just like, whatever. Right. But then this other person can come along and all of a sudden they can say the same four words I just said. And he's all, you know, I probably shouldn't be eating this. So-and-so told me it wasn't good for me. And I'm like, looking like, I just said that. Like, I just said that. But he can't hear me. He has to hear somebody else. Right? Same thing with that, with um, with our family. That's what I pray. Lord, send someone that they can hear. Send someone that can maybe relate to their circumstance in life. Because even though someone as close as, let's just say my mom, right? She's my mom, right? You really don't have family closer than your mom and your dad, right? They, they gave birth to you. But sometimes they're the ones that they can't hear you. The, the, like they can't hear you. You can't speak into their lives. But someone else can be brought into their lives and they can totally relate to them. So that's what I pray for my family is that the Lord would send somebody that's able to speak to them and would be able to express God's love for them in such a way that they can hear it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what that was the whole purpose of the church. Was the church is for us. Yeah. Yep. And as we as we um as we attend, we then become um like part of the church. Because the the building, the building, it's only church when we're there. The building's just a building when we're all gone. It doesn't do anything for anybody. It's what's in the building is the church, right? What's in the building is for church. We are the body of Christ. We are the church. Okay. So does anybody have anything else? So I probably should get started on my day. I have so much to do, guys. I really do need a, I really do need a housekeeper. I need a servant. <laughs> I need a hired hand. 
I don't know why I haven't sought it out yet. I probably should. Probably because I wouldn't be happy with their work because I'm so stinking critical. Um, so yes, everybody have a beautiful day. I'm going to let you guys go get started with your day. I hope that you guys got something very special today from our first devotion um, through the book of Job. And then also the reading of Job, of course, it's going to take a little bit. You're probably going to have to go back through and read Job from beginning to end um, because we're breaking it up in portions. So you're probably going to want to go and read that entire thing so that it kind of makes a little bit of sense. It just doesn't seem like we're doing some random um, kind of poetic reading in certain portions. Um, but again, you're here. We're all here together. And hopefully you're encouraged and um, to keep going. Keep going. Even though stuff is going to come at you, just keep going. There's a purpose in it, right? And don't forget to pray for one another. Please, please pray for one another. As the Lord puts it on your heart, don't do it because I'm telling you. Do it because the Lord has brought that person to your memory. It could just be one person in the in the here. It could just be one person and something about that person's uh, need touched you in such a way that you just have the desire to pray about them. And you know what? Just talk to the Lord about them. Just talk to the Lord about them. For some reason, the Lord has called you to a place that you get to stand on their behalf so it could be one it could be many but if the lord is prompting you walk in that because there's blessings in it not just for them of you praying for them but also for you you know because you're dying to yourself for that time frame to uh lift somebody else up so you know there's it's a beautiful thing arthur you've been quiet Hello, and yes, have a good day. One of our silent watchers. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Um, you have, right? So much to do. It's sometimes it's disgusting. And Marlene, have an awesome day. Yes, God bless you. Okay, I'm going to let you guys go. Don't forget to share scripture with somebody. It's always the best thing. It's always the most important thing every day. Um, or just... Just tell somebody what God has done in your life. That's it. You know what? Give give God the glory. You know what? I have that because the Lord blessed me with it today. Just those words, you're giving God glory. And you're, you're, those people have to give an account that they have to recognize that God is good. They, they have to recognize it, right? So um, have an awesome day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, I'm going to work on the week's thumbnails so that make sure you guys all get your notifications. And um, maybe I can randomly pop up and do my Christmas in July. I have two days left, which tomorrow's Sunday, so that won't happen. But maybe today. I might pop up randomly today. Keep your eyes peeled. We'll see what happens. So until tomorrow, you guys have an awesome day. Um, and I hope you enjoyed being here. Bye, guys.